understand And just because you're fucking him It doesn't mean you don't love me I do what you want, be What you want to be camera takes us down the block to a um, to a uh, popcorn cart. Popcorn. Popcorn. Hey, I'll take a, I'll take a popcorn. You want a big bag? Yeah. Yeah, let's have a big bag. You look like you can handle a big bag. Uh, thank you for saying so. What do you weigh, 185? Yeah, actually, 185, 190. It kind of fluctuates. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Well, tonight you'll weigh 190. This is good popcorn. You're going to want to eat all of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Now, you always own this corner? I'm thinking about uh, moving in. No, no, I, I, I sort of go around the outskirts of the park. So uh, I'll just do the diameter of the park, the outside of the park. People want popcorn going into the park. People want popcorn coming out of the park. You know, it's sort of a, maybe sort of a bad influence that you're selling, you know, like right at the park, you know, where people are trying to like run and like be healthy and stuff. Hmm. Well, uh, hmm. Maybe I'll change. What are you saying? I should go someplace else? Yeah. I mean... Honestly, even if you just walked a few blocks over, maybe, you know, we're more just in the purely residential area, just a plain street. It might be a little better, but it seems almost a little tempting to just place yourself outside a park. I mean, you're basically right across from the basketball courts, too. Jeez. Maybe not the best message. Yeah, you're really making me feel bad. Well, you're not... saying maybe I'm contributing to the obesity problem. Do you think you are? I never thought so before I met you. Seems God, pretty I cool. To, I hate to think that. My sister's really fat. She's got a terrible problem. She's always eating my popcorn. There you go. It's not... Oh, my God. Yeah. Come to think of it, I'm awfully overweight myself. I'm a portly man. I always thought it was genetic, but I eat... I didn't want to say anything. I eat a tremendous amount of popcorn. <laughs> oh my god. Do you know what I do? Every night when I go home, I because I don't want to waste anything, I eat all the remaining popcorn in my car. Oh. Man. Ten to the last <laughs> kernel. Mm. That's no gotta wonder. be contributing. That's gotta be contributing to my, my weight problem, right? Yeah, I'd say so. I think so. Mm. Mm. That's why you look like a big balloon. No offense. <laughs> so, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Also, you're wearing all red. You look like a, a birthday balloon. What? what? I'm you're wearing, wearing a birthday balloon? You're, you're wearing, wearing red, red? You're wearing red pants and a red shirt, and your body is in pretty circular. Oh, it sure. Looks like, it looks like a balloon that's been blown up with your head as the little spout that you put your mouth on. 
Well, I, you, now you're just being offensive. I suppose the <laughs> I suppose my my extra long belt that I let trail behind me looks like a string. It does. It certainly does. To be honest, when I came over here to begin with, I didn't even see the popcorn. I thought I was coming over to the balloon. I thought perhaps the balloon was signifying that there was some sort of community event. Are you being serious? I'm being 100% serious. You thought that I was a... What? A, like a sort of like attention-getting event? What? What did you think I was? That's exactly what I thought you were. I thought you were a balloon signifying that there was an event happening in the park here. And as I said, I was looking into moving into the neighborhood. I thought maybe I'd come over and meet some people. I'm not floating around in the air. I'm not bouncing around. You, you must have thought I was like a paper mache statue of a balloon, right? Or did you think I was an actual balloon, a super I balloon? Thought, I thought you were a super balloon that had perhaps been tied down to this popcorn stand. Oh, my God, that's so sad. Are you, what are you, a doctor or something? Yes, I'm a dermatologist. God, you just read me. You read my condition immediately. Doc, i got to ask you, because the popcorn I eat at night is so dry, I, I sell soda. You see that? Of course. Every night what I do is I, I take the sodas I haven't sold, and I pour them into the cart, into the metal oh. bin of the cart. To, Man. Oh, help me drink down the popcorn. Man. Could I be contributing, to, the, could I be contributing to my work? <laughs> Listen to yourself, man. You're you're pouring soda. You're essentially making. I believe what they call that at the Seven Eleven is a suicide. Putting they all this. It. It's going down, getting a little bit of each soda. You're mixing all the sodas and just pouring it down your gullet. Well, it's got popcorn in it. It's barely a pour. I mean, it's like wet, soggy popcorn that I'm shoveling oh. into my mouth. But it goes down easier than if it's just dry. I'm going to change. I'm going to stop doing what I do. I, I, I can't believe this popcorn is bad for you. I you can't, can't believe it. It took you. It took you to point out that I shouldn't be next to the park. Well, I'm happy to make, help make a change. You know, better uh, sooner than later. I agree with that. I agree with that. Now, I would still like a large popcorn. I already uh, filled up the bag for you, and I... Uh, Gave you an extra small, a big one and a little tiny one. That's just extra, extra popcorn for you, because I think you're a big guy. You can handle it. I don't want the extra small, though. I just want the large. I think you could take it, though. I think, I think you could have more popcorn if you wanted it. You see, this is the problem. You're pushing it on me. I, I asked for a large. I just a large is already too much. It's not too much. It's just it's barely enough. I mean, you should. Trust me, you can eat a lot more than just a large. I'm sure I could eat more. I'm not trying to. I just want the large. Already the large is spoiling myself. This is my treat for the day. Do you want me to pour a soda into your popcorn at least? <laughs> no. I don't want a soda at all. I have a water here. I have a Poland Springs, and I'm going to drink that with my popcorn as I walk around and look at the neighborhood. We're so different. We're so different. You're so much healthier than I am. I've ruined my body. Stop. I've ruined my body. I've ruined my body. Sir, what, how, old are you? how old are you? 35, 36? I'm 21. What? I'm 21 years old. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. I'm so sorry. There's, here, I'll, I'll tell you what I can do. As I said, I'm a dermatologist, but I am friends with several doctors. I work down at the University Hospital. I'm friends with several doctors in the GI department, gastrointestinal. I can give you one of their cards. For, I'm sorry. Are you, I, are you okay? I've got a bad cough. <laughs> you see this? Your fat is collapsing in on your lungs. I've got this cough, Doc. <laughs> I've been getting it more and more. You know, what I've been doing is at night I go up to sleep in my in my home and there's a wood-burning stove in my home that keeps it warm. I've been sleeping next to that stove and kind of sucking in the smoke 
kind of like a smoker <laughs> would, but using a stump. Man, it feels great. It gives. It makes me feel so relaxed to breathe in that smoke, that thick, dark wood burning smoke. But how can that smoke? That's the equivalent to smoking three or four hundred cigarettes a night. Oh my God, is that bad for me? Is that why I've got the cough? Yes, your lungs must be black as tar. <laughs> oh God, what have I done? I used to be on track in high school. I used to be a track star. Get can you out believe of here. that? I used to be I one hundred. I can't believe that. I was one hundred and ten pounds. What? I was one hundred and ten pounds in high school. I just made a series of awful mistakes. Awful decisions oh since I graduated high school. Two of your old selves could fit inside this body that now houses your soul. More than that. More than that. Five. Easy five. Let's not be hard. Why do I not even why did I even even start to think I'll breathe in the smoke from that stove? <laughs> it probably felt good. It did. It felt so good. It felt so good to me. What you have, son, is an addiction. You're addicted to this lifestyle you've chosen. Basically a lifestyle of hedonism. You eat a ton of popcorn, you drink a ton of soda, you breathe in smoke. You just do whatever you want. Yeah. Hold out your hand. What are you going to do? Slap it. I'm going to slap it with a ruler. That's going to hurt. I know. Ow. That really hurt me bad. No, I'm sorry I had to do that. But the next time you drink a soda, or want to have some popcorn, or want to lay down your little bed next to that cot, next to that fire, I want you to think about how that felt. I'm going to change. I'm going to change. You know, tonight I think I won't eat all my popcorn or drink all my sodas. I think I'll just throw away half the popcorn. And I'll, I'll only pour in half the sodas into the into the bin, and I'll just eat that tonight. <laughs> so already pouring in half the sodas, you're talking about half the sodas from this cart and half the popcorn that's left over from the day? That's half of what I normally eat. That's great, but it's already way, way more than you need. I don't know. I don't Here's what you're going to have tonight. You're going to have a pack of saltine crackers and some water. <laughs> Oh my god, that sounds awful. How much is in a pack? Is it about a cart's worth? <laughs> How much worth it? We cut away from this. And, uh... and we, uh, we, uh, the camera continues down the street. Um, and we, um, we uh, go into a, a, a suburban home. Well... I'm glad you're finally letting me meet your son. Well, I want you to meet him. You're important to me, and obviously my son's important to me. Thanks. I was just a little worried for a while. You know, you had your kid about four months ago. This is the first time seeing him. Well, it's private. Baby's private, of course. In what way? Well, um, you know... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to... Okay. I mean, you know this already, so I, I shouldn't be embarrassed, but... He came out of uh, Rebecca naked, and uh, he spends a lot of time naked, and... Um, he's, he's a baby. He's a right, he's a baby. So he can't dress himself. And, um, you know, I wouldn't want people seeing me naked, rolling around in a bunch of blankets with... Food all over me. I'd be embarrassed. So, Paul, oh, Paul, oh. you're holding him to too high of a standard. He's a baby. He can't control these things. He's not choosing to do them. Oh, I, I don't blame baby. him. I'm not. I don't blame him. I know he's just Good. a baby. But like he poos his pants, so we've got to take sure. him off when he does that. And he's naked then, and he's got poo all over him, plus food on his face. It's disg it's embarrassing, and so I don't. You know, for his own sake, I don't want people around to see him. This is going to be a very short visit, okay? You can, you can tell the guys at work, you saw my kid. Go back to work, tell him you saw my kid, okay? But I don't want you snapping any photos. I don't want you waiting around for him to get naked. Oh, come on, please. Come on. <laughs> Danielle, Danielle's on her way home. 
I promised her we'd keep, you know, we'd keep you and uh, Jake here. We'd get a couple pictures. You know, have a good time. I thought you were going to stay for dinner, even. I, I Look, I, I can't, okay? I'm going to show you my son. I'm going to take him out of the carrying case. Mm -hmm. Show you what he's like. Please. I gotta get him out of here right now because, like, honestly, I don't even know how much oxygen this thing has. All right, so I want to lay these ground rules down, take okay. the kid out of the carrying case, refill it with oxygen, and then get back on the road because I want to, you know, he might have to go to the bathroom. He might want to get naked. All right, you know, what? first things first. Let's just let's see Jake. Let's just bring him out. Let me see him. Oh, he's sleeping. He's a sleeper. A little sleeper. <laughs> back, up, back up, back up, back up. What, what, what? Come on, back up, back up, back up. What? I was just touching his hand. Don't, I don't want you touching Stop. his hand. I don't want you embarrassing him. All right? He's, 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 in a, he's sleeping. All right? It's the middle of the day. What is it? Two o'clock. It's ridiculous for him to be asleep. Ridiculous. He, he, he's a baby. Yeah, I know he's a baby. I know what he is. He's my baby. He's my baby. You wake him up, and then, and then he's like, "Oh, I was sleeping in the middle of the day. I feel bad about myself." That'll have effect. He won't have that thought. He's a child. Oh, you, you don't, don't think, think my? He... Oh, you don't think my son is smart enough to have that thought? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that no baby is, is smart it? enough. I'm saying no baby is smart enough to have that thought. Well, let's not risk it. Okay, I don't want to play dice with my baby's future. Come, come on. You got like at least a year before, a couple years before he's going to remember anything. You don't think he remembers things? No. Oh. No, I don't think he remembers any of this. Well, uh, uh, well, this is happening right now, so it would be very strange if he remembered it. But <laughs> All right. Let me, let me tell don't you right smart. now. No, it's not smart. I'm, it, you're all over the map. You're all over the map. I, I know he doesn't remember things because he doesn't remember this right now. Well, how could he remember this right now? That makes no sense. You know, so just think about what you're saying. This is a pure little baby. He's a tiny little baby. He could be easily embarrassed by That's showing not himself. That's true. It is true. How it do you... is absolutely true. He doesn't get embarrassed. He doesn't know what's going on. He cries just because he needs something. It's the only thing he can do. He's a baby. Oh, he cries because he needs something. He knows that's going on. Maybe you know, what he his, needs is to not be embarrassed. His body is just responding. It's like it's like when a dog scratches itself. It doesn't know it has an itch. It, the body just feels an itch, and then the dog starts scratching. You think a dog doesn't know when it's got an itch? What kind of bozo are you? You think a dog <laughs> hey, doesn't Paul, know when it has Paul, an itch? Keep in mind, this is my house. Oh, I'll keep it in mind. That's why I'm not letting my son. calls me a bozo in my own house. Well, that was a bozo thing you said. It was a bozo thing you said. A dog knows when it's got an itch. I had a dog. You know, I had a dog who was very itchy. I had a very itchy dog. You remember? Uh, what's that? Yeah, Speed. You remember Speed? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speed was a very, uh, very itchy dog. He used to get uh, all kinds of uh, ticks on him, scratches on him. He had like a skin fungus thing. He was always scratching. Ooh. He was always scratching. I remember that. You couldn't bring that dog anywhere. It stunk. Ah, yeah, the fungus on his skin would smell very bad, unfortunately. It smelled very bad, that fungus. But I never told you this. He, um, The day he died, the day he fell down that manhole, I had a dream. I had a dream that he came to me, and I know that it's the truth that my dog came to me in my dream. And I said, Speed, what happened? Why'd you go down that manhole? You're such a smart dog. Why would you dive down a manhole? And he yeah. said to me, I thought the cool water of the sewer would ease my itch, my itchiness. It sort of sounded like, um, I hope you don't laugh, but it kind of sounded like that dancer from uh, Singing in the Rain. What's his name? Gene Hackman? <laughs> Gene Kelly. Yeah, I, think so. I think you had it right. 
it's Gene, Gene Hackman. No, 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 it was it wasn't Gene Hackman. It was Gene <laughs> Kelly. It sounded like Gene Kelly and singing in the rain. And he said okay. to me, "I got a very itchy body. You know that. You know that." It was strange because he was sitting on top of me in my dream, you know. But it was kind of like a human. Yeah, I, I gotta say it. And uh, please earmuff your son if this is gonna offend you. But bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> Do you just you make up that, you make up this whole dream sequence to prove me wrong that a dog can feel an itch? No, I didn't make that up. That's a very sensitive memory that I shared with you. See, this is why I don't want to share things with you. Because you're gonna make fun of it and be like, oh, it's not true. Really, if my son comes out with shit on his on his rump, you're gonna be like, oh, yeah, you put that there. He didn't really pull it out. You put that there. I would not say that. He's a baby. Well, then why are you saying that my dream's not true? That happened to me. A mutated okay. version of my dog that was kind of humanoid came to me, sat on my chest. He was much larger, and he had technology with him, alien <laughs> technology. And he said to me that he went down that manhole because he was so itchy. All right. You know what? Who am I to say that the dream didn't happen? But can we at least agree that the dream the dream happening still doesn't prove that the dog can feel an itch? I'll agree with that, although I know a dog can feel an itch, but I'll agree with that. If you'll agree that I am now embarrassed because of your behavior. I'm that sorry. That you have called into the question the veracity of my statements and that it embarrasses me. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here, um, why don't you go why don't you take a nap or something and I'll I'll look out after your baby. All right. You can I'll nap in my bed if you want. Have you been, have you, do you have any experience with babies? Well, sure, I used to be a baby. <laughs> That's good enough. Think back to your time as a baby so that you know what this baby needs. I'll go take a nap in your bed. <laughs> I know where it is. Don't worry. I know where it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, finally get to... Take a look at this baby. Hey, buddy. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, look at you. You're having a good time, aren't you? Hey, look at that big smile. You're waving. Wow. <laughs> hey, buddy. I feel itchy. What? I feel itchy. <laughs> what? I feel itchy. What? Paul! Paul! Oh. What, is, what, what, what is it, man? What? I was just sleeping in your bed. I'm sorry, you're... you're I know oh, my God, from, what time is it? How long was I out for? <laughs> you're out a minute, out. minute, two minutes, tops. Oh, God, I'm so exhausted with this baby. Listen, the, your son, I know this is going to sound crazy, your son just said, I feel itchy. That doesn't sound crazy to me. He's a very itchy, very itchy carrying case. That but he's a baby. He's like, he's like six months old. It was amazing enough that he was waving. See, you don't think that things can feel things, know things. You, you like, are very narcissistic. You think that only you know things or think things or feel things. This baby thinks things. He feels things. All right? So, like, it oh, doesn't surprise me. What did he say? He, like, showed you that he was scratching himself and that got you freaked out? He's, he's literally said, I feel itchy. No, you're way off. He can't talk yet. He can't that's, form sentences, for sure. That's what I thought, but he said it. Look. And I swear to you, he even repeated it. He repeated it after the first time. All right. I never told you this. When Speed went down, when Speed fell down that manhole cover, all right, and died, I didn't think I was dreaming when he first visited it. Okay? The house shook. There was a light coming out of the closet. I opened it up, and the dog, Speed, this humanoid version of my dog, was dressed up in my wife's clothes. <laughs> what? It, to me, at the moment, it seemed like aliens had come. Like it was an alien, and it was testing out my wife's clothes. It wasn't until I had enough therapy I realized... I must have been dreaming. You must have been dreaming when that baby spoke to you. <laughs> I was. What Don't I'm fall talking, asleep when you're watching my baby. Don't you fall asleep not, when you're watching my baby. <laughs> what I'm talking about is a baby saying words, which is, yes, you unusual. Dream that. You dream that. Okay? 
I'm going to take a nap. I am out of it. You okay if I take that nap in your bed and I'll probably put on some of your clothes? Yeah, yeah you know what? Something comfy? Feel free. If you want, if you want, I have the nicer stuff is in my closet in the dresser. I have like t-shirts, sweatpants, and, you know. Oh, yeah, tops. the nicer stuff. Let me get to the nicer stuff. All right. Yeah. Oh. Hey, maybe your daddy was right. Maybe I am <laughs> in it. <laughs> maybe I dozed off there, buddy. <laughs> but you're wide awake, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, you're dancing a little bit, huh? You can hear the ice cream truck outside. <laughs> hey, you're going to learn about ice cream in plenty of time. Give it a couple years, you're going to love it. <laughs> I'll build you a truck. What? I will build you a truck. <laughs> You'll build what? A tiny truck. I'll build it for you. Paul! Paul! Look! A tiny truck! A tiny truck! What is going on? This... this Paul! What, what is it? What is it? What? Oh, my God. Paul. Oh, my God. Paul, is it still I'm... Tuesday? Is it still Tuesday? Paul, you were asleep... Two minutes tops. No, no way. No way. And I imagine I, with the time it took you to put on this suit and two ties, for whatever reason, you maybe were asleep for 20, 30 seconds tops. So good. I want to wear something nice. <laughs> Listen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long you were asleep. The point is Jake started talking again. No. You're dreaming. I'm not dreaming. It was two minutes. I can't even fall asleep. It takes me, I know this, it takes me seven minutes to fall asleep because we DVR Letterman every night, and I always know the next morning when, where I fell asleep. It's seven minutes, almost always. Listen to me, buddy. You fell asleep. That's why you don't know how long I've been asleep because I've been asleep a lot longer than what you say. You fell asleep and you had a quick little dream, but it took you hours to have it. What are you so worried about? What, what, what happened in your dream that you're so worried about? <laughs> Jake said he was going to build me a little truck. He said that to you? Yes. I dreamed that he said that to me. What? I had a similar dream where my son told me he would build me a tiny truck. A very tiny truck. And then the next day I found a tiny truck. He handed me this tiny truck. Paul, what is going on? And that's our show. That's our show. That's the end of T Bird at the Dredge. Right there. Just when things are getting interesting for that that, that uh, duo. But I don't think that what was going to happen next was funny. I think it was probably pretty fucking scary. Yeah, it sort of uh, ends on a cliffhanger, though. Yeah, I mean, but I think we know what happens. The child probably eats them or. Oh, yeah. Makes them more trucks. <laughs> the two things. Um, Sounds pretty logical to me. So this that brings us to the conclusion of this night's uh, improv events. We've had three great teams tonight. And I want to thank all of them for their efforts and their time. I want to thank uh, everyone who tuned in to watch improv tonight. And I hope if you liked what you saw, you'll like the Facebook page. You'll join the mailing list. Uh, we have really fun, um, scarcely attended. Uh, improv jams every day of the week now, Monday through Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. I hope you'll join us for those. Uh, that's Eastern Standard Time. And this was um, Alex French, uh, the Dranch, doing great improv tonight. Thank you so hey. much for having us, guys. Thank you very yeah. much. Thanks so much to uh, Terry, uh, a.k.a. T-Bird. That's right. It's true. That's true. My name is T-Bird. My name is T-Bird. <laughs>